Hi, my name is Mark Muller. I'm known as Sanguine Teapots on uh, socials and my website. And I've been making pottery since I was 17, so about 17 years now. Um, and I, I really enjoy it. I started making teapots um, when I moved to Seattle and, you know, just obviously got hooked. And uh, it's one of the hardest things to do in clay, so it was a challenge that I was up for and really enjoyed. And, um, yeah, so I started working with Wisella, which is a Georgia clay single source, which means it's dug right out of the ground, not mixed with anything. Um, and I've been trying to make teaware that sort of fit the way that people brew tea here in the States. Cool. Okay, so for me, um, I'm Dart from Fire and Earth Teaware. I'm not the only one at Fire and Earth Teaware, but um, I'm the one that you'll see on the face of everything for the company. Um, our main focus is really educating on specifically Gong Fu Teaware, Chinese style Gong Fu Teaware. Um, again, we have these really great opportunities to work with people like Mark um, and other other people in kind of these tangential or like side markets, right? He has this kind of like American style Gong Fu, if you will. Um, so it's really cool to get to interact. But again, we will be using pretty much exclusively um, Chinese pottery. Um, and I do also speak Chinese as well um, and uh, Mandarin. Um, it's kind of a funny little story. If you talk to anyone in China um, and you tell them, uh, you know, the word Mandarin, they get they get kind of confused. They're like, it's the mother tongue and everything else is a dialect. So I will use Chinese and Mandarin interchangeably. But um, yeah, please don't 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 hold me accountable for it. OK. Um, all right. Yeah. So the main considerations as a craftsman are, are these things, the size of the handle, meaning how big the actual like profile is whether you're putting one finger in it or two fingers um, this is the first teapot i ever bought from a great potter down in georgia so this i can fit three full fingers in right and it's sort of a british fair style teapot but the idea being that the profile and shape of the hand it's hold it um and you know whether you're putting a finger in or whether you're pinch gripping it so the size of the handle matters, matters a lot. The diameter is talking more about the, the sort of uh, width of the handle. Um, because like I was saying before, a little here, put a finger inside of, mm. a little more comfortable because your finger can wrap around it. If it's really tiny, that's a little bit more difficult. Mm. But with a smaller handle, it's much easier to pinch grip. Mm. And it's also a matter of balance aesthetic. So if you want a smaller handle on a smaller pot. Um, so that is something that I think about a little bit. And then texture, um, for me, it's it's just that I'm gonna go with the natural texture of the clay. Um, but oftentimes teapots are buffed or sort of polished after the fact, mm. and the handles will be left a little bit more rough than the pot itself. Um, and the other thing to consider is like when you put a pot into the wood fire this one for instance kind of got glazed on the handle mm. and so the handle's a little bit slick which is not ideal mm. so you would want to avoid glazing handles where where possible um and then profile um i mean something a little bit different than diameter where a lot of times you'll have a handle where it's sort of smushed and flatter um and that makes it a lot better for putting fingers through Right, because that way it doesn't have to be that thick this way, and your fingers can sort of rest inside of the handle. And this is a, you know, a little bit of an extreme example, but this is a great example of a flatter handle and the way that they're really nice to hold. Yep, yep, cool. Yeah. So it's really just a matter of, um, as a potter, figuring out how you want someone to interact with the pot and then hoping that that corresponds to the way that they want to hold it. Cool. All right, so holding a teapot. In Chinese, it's called ba hu. So it's just literally, you know, to hold. So ba is hold and hu is just um, is, is just short for cha hu, which is teapot or in this case, pot, okay? So <clears throat> we're gonna go over the Chinese tones. Um, again, I, I associate specific colors with these to help me memorize them when I'm working uh, with my tones because the colors are often easier uh, to remember than just the tone mark by itself. We already have associations with color and so it can help you to remember the tones better. So these are the first, second, third, and fourth tones, um, you know, in studying Chinese and uh, 
I go through basically based on something in real life that I feel is associated with each of the tones. So the first tone、um, is just a high,、uh, consistent pitch, right? And so when I think of that, I think of yellow, and the yellow reminds me of the sun, right? It's bright and it's high and it's vibrant, right? So for example, this this first tone would be. Ah,、uh, and it would just be high. Okay, the second tone、um, I think of green for like grass or growth because it has this rising sound to it, right? So ah,、uh, right. It goes from a little bit low、um, to to kind of your higher end.、Um, the third tone, it, it does drop. A lot of people think it goes down and comes back up because of the shape of the tone mark. That's not exactly true. It's more you kind of just get down into the the roughest kind of deepest point in your voice,、um, but it does drop a little and come up a little. But it's it's not a full cycle. But I have that for blue because it reminds me of water because water flows right. It has a flow to it.、Um, and then the fourth tone、um, is 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 just firm, like you're like you're angry, like you're finishing something off, just kind of like an, an exacerbated noise.、Um, so going across for the four of them, we have ah 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 ah. Okay, so I associate the colors with them to help me remember which tone it actually is. And so when I'm studying, going through my flashcards, I have these colors associated with them. So hopefully, this can kind of help you as we're going through the presentation、um, to remember it.、Um, for us at Fire and Earth Tewear, we do start doing Chinese with all of our secondary levels. So if you buy any like individual teapot, there will be some Chinese association that we'll have with it because the language and the culture of Tewear. Is intertwined, and so if you're if you're getting you know this nice teaware, you want to have this overlap and kind of understand the culture behind it as well. So in Chinese, right? In Chinese culture, in Gongfu tea, there's there's two types of teapots that we have, right? So again, ba hu is to、uh, hold the teapot, and then the, the two types are underneath, right? We have a cha hu. Uh, which is a, a Chinese teapot, right? Small teapot, or literally just translated teapot,、um, and then the gai wan, which obviously we, we most people know what a gai wan is.、Um, again, we have given it an English name. We call it a brew cup, just so it's easier. We want to have all Chinese and all English names for everything, just so it's easier for people who are new.、Um, but gai wan literally means covered. Bowl, right, a wan is a bowl, and a gai or a gai is is a lid. So it's just a lidded or a covered bowl is the literal translation. But again, we do call it a brew cup、um, at Fire and Earth Teaware. Okay, so there's four methods、um, of holding a, a teapot. Again, a cha, not a, not a gai wan. Right, we're not talking about gai wans or brew cups right now. So we have the tea method, the ko method, the zhi method, and the zhua method. Okay. All right. So first, we have the T. So the T method、um, is pretty. It's pretty simple. It's the two-handed method.、Um, I, I I don't know. I feel like it's kind of more of a new pot thing.、Uh, it's you see it in in some you know some tea ceremonies, but it's it's pretty uncommon that you know that you see someone who who really is comfortable with their teaware using using two hands, really on a big or small pot. Yeah. So you're gonna want to use、um, your pointer finger and your thumb to grasp the handle. Right, the top of the handle, and then your pointer finger on your opposite hand、um, on the lid, but making sure you're not hitting the lid button.、Um, so we have just a quick little example here.、Um, this is a teapot that I have.、Um, I like to use it with small pots. I don't know. I feel like it adds to kind of like the fancy daintiness of it.、Um, but I rarely actually ever use、uh, this method of holding. But but it is it is it is a method of you know of holding the teapot. So I want to make sure we talk about it. Okay, so the next one,、um, it's called the the ko method, right? So ko hu. This one, I call it the chill method because I feel like this is kind of the most relaxed, right? This is your kind of just like I'm relaxing, enjoying a good tea tea sesh.、Um, this one, you have to have a pot that has a big enough hole that you can put your finger through to do it. Yeah, so Mark's doing it right now. Yeah, so your middle finger is gonna go through the hole and really hold the handle. Your pointer finger goes on top,、uh, and then your your thumb is gonna go on the lid.、Um, for this method, honestly, this is the one that I use most.、Um, let me see if I can switch to my camera here for a moment. Let's see if this works. Okay, perfect, great. So when I'm using Mark's teapots, this is usually my favorite method. Actually,、um, I really like. Sorry, mirroring. Okay, I really like、um, using this method with Mark's teapots, and the reason is 
it's really, really easy, like to just hold with your middle finger, kind of drop that on top. And then your thumb uh, just drops right on top. And I think it's cool. It kind of looks like you're holding like a regular mug almost. Like if you tilt it this way, it almost looks like you're holding a regular mug, right? Like a tea mug. Um, and Mark does this obviously for very intentional reason. Um, he has arthritis and so he makes his handles higher, uh, which actually helps right to hold it. So it feels a little bit more comfortable and you can even do it with two fingers um, and, and just kind of do, you know, a, a different method that I'm not even going to talk about today. Um, but yeah, I usually use this when I'm using Mark's, Mark's pots because it, it feels very good. And I don't even need the second finger, honestly, because of where the handle position is with his. So again, here's here's what it looks like on a pot. Um, this is this is just a niching pot that I have. And again, Mark just demonstrated it as well. Um, this is the most relaxed way for sure. But again, it doesn't work with every pot because you have to have a hole that's big enough for you to put your finger through it. Okay. So the next method is is kind of the method of utility. You should be able to do this with any pot if it's you know 60 milliliters or 300 milliliters. You really should be able to to use this. Um, this, if you've seen uh, Maylee's masterclass on how to hold a teapot, Don kind of goes over all of, you know, all the things he talks about, all the considerations, and this is the method that he settles on. Um, and it's it's straight out of the Chinese history book. So we have the zhi hu. Um, so let me go ahead here. We'll jump forward to holding it, right? So this is your traditional, you know, when you hear Mark talk about the pinch grip, right? This is what we're talking about. So again, your middle finger and thumb are going to be on opposing sides of the handle. Uh, your pointer finger is going to be on the lid um, and then you know for support if you need it you can use your ring finger uh, to put kind of under the handle um, and that can help to give you a little bit extra support um, when you're holding it typically you don't need to do that um, on smaller pots but again if you're getting into the 250 milliliter plus pots you may want to add in that um, that ring finger um, underneath it just to just to give it that little bit extra support yeah cool Okay. All right. So then we have the zhua hu. Okay. So this is literally grasp. Like it's, I just took it from the translation. I think it is the best way to describe it. Yeah, exactly how Mark has it pulled up now. Um, I have two, this is an easy guy one. This is two variations kind of of the, of the zhua. Um, the first is your, your classic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch my camera to me for a second here. Okay. So your first is actually kind of on a classic teapot, right? And so that's where you you put your finger through the handle hole, right? And then you grasp over the top of it. Now this is a niching pot, okay? Um, it's very thin walled, even though it's vitrified, like it's, it's stoneware, so the heat, doesn't dissipate right it stays in the pot and so i would burn my hand like if i if i did this on this pot i would burn my hand for sure 100 percent guaranteed there are very few pots like straight up teapots that are meant to be held like this like the designer has to specifically make the walls thick enough uh, make the handle the right shape like you would actually want an upside down handle right like if i flip this over um, it's way more comfortable when it has this kind of like downward teardrop shape. Um, so you definitely would want a very specific, you know, ergonomics if you're going to go with this. It's a very personal hold. Um, it's, it's, it's nice, it's cool, but it's, it's not very functional. Um, typically, your jaw is going to be better on like an easy guy one like this one um, where, you know, you have handles on either side. So it doesn't matter how hot it is. This is another reason why with Japanese tea where you'll see the handle is teapots because you're brewing at lower temperatures with green tea. And since you're brewing at lower temperatures, it doesn't matter as much um, that the pot is getting hot. And that's why, you know, you'll see like, for example, with the Hoheen, it's going to have higher walls. Um, it, it's all goes into the same, the same factors for that. Um, but again, if I were to draw this one, you can, you can pretty easily do it. It still does get pretty hot. Um, but again, it's, it's a very personal hold, um, when you're, when you're drawing a teapot. Um, and again, it has to be really kind of specifically tailored for it. So yeah. Okay. So for holding a brew cup, right? The guy one, right? There's really only two methods. Um, there's variations of these two methods but really there's there's only two that that really are are formalized um so the first one is the the sanju um which is just three finger so you have the three finger method 
And then again, we see this joie. It is a different joie, but it, it kind of functionally ends up being the same thing. Um, the word is the same. It's also a grasp hold, but the way that you do it is different. So give me give me a moment and we'll, we'll get right to it. So the first one, the, the method of Sanju. Um, so this is, again, your three finger hold. So what this is going to look like is if you take your Gaiwan, right? You're going to take these, your middle finger and your thumb, and it's going to go around the top of the Gaiwan. And then your finger just drops. Obviously, you angle it first. Right? And then your finger drops over the top. And so with just your three fingers, you're holding the Gaiwan and you can pour, right? Um, so yeah, that's that's the method that you can use for the Gaiwan for anything, right? So any teapot, you can use um, that method on, right? So. There is also a variation of this, right? And this is the method that I usually use. I would still say, you're, this is still a sanji, right? You're still using three fingers, um, but I prefer the one where you actually put your finger kind of in the top of the lid. Um, I just feel like I have a little bit more to hold on to. Um, and if there's any steam coming out, like I have long fingers, so if there's any steam coming out and I have my finger going straight across, sometimes that steam will actually catch my finger if my finger's going across. But if I have it tucked in, like in this one, then that doesn't happen, right? So if I have it tucked in, then when I'm pouring, I don't I don't have to worry about the steam burn. So I use this method. It's not technically the formal jiu method, the sand jiu method. Um, again, the sand jiu uh, method is going to be with the straight finger, but this is kind of a variation of that um, that I see a lot of people using, you know, besides myself as well. Um, as yeah. Okay, so the next is the the zhua. So this says, the, if you look at the uh, the Chinese underneath here, uh, this says zhua wan fa. So it's the uh, the grass bowl method. Okay, um, I think Mark, you said this is how you normally hold uh, a gaiwan, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this one's pretty cool. Uh, this is also kind of a specialized method, though. So I'm gonna switch over here. So with this gaiwan, this is too tall. Right, this is too tall for me to be able to do that. So I can't really get my fingers, like I have a big hand, but I can't really get my fingers over it. Like the the, the lid kind of starts to come up and I can't really do that that well. Um, so you need a, a shallower, a shorter guy one in order to do that. So um, this one is kind of weird too. You have, to, you have to set it up before you pick it up. Um, the, the three finger method, you can just kind of put your hands on and pick it up, you know, from the ground, from the base. This, you kind of have to pick it up first and then you put your two fingers under, you put your thumb on the top of the lid and typically you actually pour toward yourself. Um, you almost feel like like an upside down kind of Spider-Man look to it, um, but you pour facing yourself. Um, when you're holding like this, it's pretty cool. It's personal. I, I don't know. I, I like the I like the the Wan, uh, method, uh, but again, you can't do it with tall guy one, so you can't do it with everything. But again, kind of similar to the the chill method um, that I use for holding March teapots. Um, you know, this is my favorite one. This is my preferred hold. But again, you can't do it with every every single teapot. Um, so again, sometimes you kind of have to stick to the the original one. But yeah, okay. So that's it, guys. There's really not that many formalized ways to hold the teapot um, or a guy one. Again, obviously, there's plenty of variation. Um, there's plenty of variations on those, but those those are kind of the six main methods um, to holding a teapot. So for the next um, for the next class, I'm actually going to skip ahead here, and then we'll come back. For the next class, we're going to be talking about oxidation and reduction. I think this is going to be really, really exciting because I think one, not a lot of people understand it. And, and two, it'll help give some clarity when you're looking at and considering buying teapots. Um, the main reason for that is basically when you go through um, the oxidation or reduction process, you're, you're chemically changing um, the clay, which helps to change the color, right? And so that's why you'll see these different variations uh, of the same clay, right? So classically, for example, let's talk about like Yixing clays, right? Yixing clays um, are typically, you know, we have our, our Juni, right? This kind of this Juni color, this Cinnabar Juni color. Um, and I just saw actually Mud and Leaves posted about one this morning um, where they, they did a reduction firing of Juni and it turned it black. And again, we're gonna talk about why that is. Um, it's, it's cool, it's really cool. But a lot of times when we see these, these classic um, names, right? We hear Juni, we think red, or we think Zuni, we think purple, right? Um, you know, the purple sand and the cinnabar. But when you do this reduction, and when, when we talk about oxidation reduction, you'll see there's actually several colors that most clays can get to. Um, but I'm not gonna spoil too much. <laughs> 
it's a, it's a really interesting conversation, and it's one that you know potters understand somewhat. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna dive in a little bit on the nerdier side, talk about the chemistry, what's going on, and then talk about the practical applications of that and why you would want to use reduction over oxidation, kind of what it does for aesthetics as well as functionality. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm really excited. It's kind of cool that even even just uh, especially talking about like, you know, Mark knows a lot about his Lysella clay, um, and and you can even see and we can point out and we will point out um, these kind of characteristics that that you get from even reducing in different ways from the kind of normal way and, and these other like variations as well. Um, before we before we close up here, let's kind of go back and we'll go through the go through the methods again. So again, first we have the T hold, right? So this is gonna be your pointer finger and then your thumb and then your second hand pointer finger to pour. Again, you'll see this kind of in fancy like tea ceremonies or things like that, typically not as much used in practical ways. Uh, then we have the co method, right? And this is going to be your middle finger, your forefinger, and then your thumb. Right? Really comfortable, easy to pour, um, but again, only works if the hole is big enough. Uh, then we have the Jir method, right? Which is your, that's your, your kind of traditional pinch grip. So middle finger and thumb on the handle, pointer finger on the lid, but not covering the lid button, forefinger covering the bottom if it is a bigger pot, right? Most versatility, kind of most useful, um, but not quite as cool as, as the previous method. Um, and then again, your Dwahu, right? This is gonna be your, your full grasp, really the pot has to be made for it and have you know extra extensions on this, thicker walls, etc. that the, the craftsman has, the potter has has thought of. And then again, the guy won, we have the center method, the traditional method, right? With your finger straight, the variation with your finger tucked in. And then you have the draw wanfa, right? Spider-Man. Uh, the grasp hold um, of the of the guy one, which I don't know. I just it's so much more comfortable. Like you, I don't I don't feel like I'm gonna drop or break it. But yeah. So thank you guys for tuning in.